Okay, uh, my name is uh, Shamnath Bashir. I'm a professor of law at uh, the National University of Juridical Sciences. Um, the IDEA program was uh, conceptualized uh, several years back, actually, uh, but uh, never really took any firm root uh, because uh, a couple of us that were thinking about it never had the bandwidth to translate it effectively. Uh, I joined NUJS around uh, the end of 2007 and, uh, uh, and then decided that uh, uh, this must be the right time to start something on the lines of uh, what we're doing uh, through IDEA now. The project essentially, uh, if you ask me what's the fundamental idea behind the project, uh, it goes back to an age-old uh, saying or an age-old aphorism which says, uh, you, know, you give a man a fish, uh, you feed him for a day. You teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. And that's the entire idea behind uh, IDEA. IDEA, as you know, is increasing diversity by increasing access to legal education. And the, uh, the underlying aim is to increase access to legal education to a number of uh, underprivileged students, to a number of students from underprivileged communities, communities that are not often represented in uh, the major, in the premier law schools. Um, so the top law schools today, uh, by and large, are a set of law schools that uh, we now know as the national law schools. Uh, there are about 14 of them. Uh, not all of them are, uh, are, are good in that sense. I mean, some are better than the others. Uh, some are not so good. But the top national law schools are seen as uh, the premier legal institutes, the, the, uh, the high-end uh, education uh, institutions uh, for, for law degrees. Um, and it started, the national law school started out approximately at the end of 1980s with the national law school in Bangalore. And subsequently, a number of other national law schools took root in various other states. Uh, so we have uh, Nalsar in Hyderabad, we have NUJS in uh, Calcutta, we have um, NLU in Jodhpur, uh, and similarly, several other law schools. Out of these 14 law schools, 11 of them came together uh, and to sign an agreement um, so that they would just have one common entrance test for the study of law. So the way that a student uh, gets into law school today is uh, by writing an exam that is called CLAT, Common Law Admission Test. It's an exam that's conducted by 11 of these law schools uh, by rotation. So every year, one of the law schools would do the exam, uh, and the next year it would be another law school. Uh, so this year, NUJS is doing the exam. Uh, and CLAT uh, is an exam that attempts to test for a student's aptitude for the study of law. Uh, that's the underlying idea. You know, is a student, does a student have basic analytical abilities, uh, does the student have basic logical reasoning skills uh, that could then make them into an effective lawyer, because law is about logic uh, and experience, of course, but uh, you need to have sound logical reasoning skills, you need to have very good analytical abilities to study the law, and the exam is meant to test that. It's not meant to test knowledge uh, of any sort, but really meant to test, you know, can you think logically? And uh, once you can think logically, then you can analyze cases, you can analyze statutes, you can apply the law, um, and also you can uh, work your way towards reforming the law in whatever way you think that the law needs to be reformed. Um, so th the national law schools over a number of years became increasingly elitist uh, because the exam got tougher, the prestige associated with the national law schools went up. So in the late 1980s, there were not many students who wanted to do law, and particularly wanted to do it out of the national law schools, uh, because law wasn't a very attractive profession. Uh, you know, the first choices were always engineering and medicine. In fact, the first choices continue to be engineering and medicine. And uh, law also had a negative uh, perception associated with it. The lawyer was always seen as someone uh, not to be trusted, dishonest, would do anything to win a case. Uh, so several perceptions around law, around law degrees, you know, the lawyer as a liar, etc., etc. So much so that uh, one of the training centers uh, that train students for CLAT, uh, one of the coaching centers, private coaching centers, uh, they had undertaken several programs in, uh, in schools, in high schools, so that uh, they could... Uh, sensitize students about law, about CLAT, and of course they had a private agenda in mind which is they wanted more students to join their coaching centers. 
but one of them had a fascinating story where the principal of the school uh, threw the person out when they introduced themselves and said, we want to talk to your students about law as a potential career option, and uh, we want to train them to write the National Law School entrance test. And they were thrown out from that school uh, because the principal told them that law is a dirty profession and that none of his students, he was, he was not going to permit any of his students to study law. So you see, the perception associated with law, unfortunately, in India, in large parts, is a negative one. And people haven't realized that, uh, you know, as with every other profession, there will be uh, some bad apples. And uh, with law also, there are some bad apples that we have as part of our box of lawyers. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the entire profession is tainted. There are, the law is a very transformative instrument. The law is an instrument of social change, of social empowerment, if used and wielded well, it can bring about radical, rapid changes uh, and create a bet better society for all of us. And we've seen that, you know, several of our freedom fighters used law in very, very good ways to achieve their ends. Legal skills, legal training gave them the powers of advocacy, the powers of persuasion uh, that did them very, very good, put them in good stead when they were advocating the cause for an independent India, when they were fighting against the British. So I think uh, a good legal education is not just about earning a good job, but is also about offering students very valuable life skills, skills such as argumentation skills, such as advocacy skills, such as you know, being able to draft and write very coherent petitions, very persuasive petitions, and uh, the ability to speak in front of a crowd, the ability to make a valid point, to argue it cogently and coherently, and I think these valuable skills uh, need to be kept in mind as we discuss law. So when you ask me, you know, that underprivileged communities, what kind of help would law do for them? It can be pretty immense. I mean, the law is, uh, to put it very bluntly, an instrument of power. And underprivileged communities need to be part of that power equation. And that's, that is the underlying idea behind uh, IDEA, you know, the IDEA project, that we think that a number of law schools, a number of lawyers, a number of people in the legal profession are fighting for the cause of the underprivileged. They are taking up public interest causes. They are providing legal aid to these communities. But we don't think it's enough. We think we need to flip the coin the other way and say that rather than us helping them, let's help them to help themselves. Let's give them the tool of the law. Let's arm them with the law so that they can then go and transform their own communities by themselves. And they will be much better advocates at doing that than any of us trying to help them. So effectively, we teach them how to fish. And uh, not only do they, uh, do not, not only are they fed for a lifetime, their communities are fed for a lifetime, their communities are much better off at the end of it. And, and that is our aim, that is our goal. And we hope that uh, the results, of course, are going to be very long term. We're not expecting any short term quick results. We're not in here for very short term quick fix solutions. Uh, we're going to be patient about it, but we're going to do it very gradually, very slowly, uh, and in a very sustained manner. So in terms of what the program actually does, uh, what IDEA does, uh, uh, increasing diversity by increasing access, as the name itself suggests, uh, we want to increase access to legal education at the premier legal ed uh, education institutes for representatives of underprivileged communities. So our first aim is really to identify those communities, to go out there, to pick uh, students from those communities who might have the aptitude to study law, and then to train them for this entrance exam. That's a very difficult entrance exam. And then hope that they will then make it to the law schools, um, study, become good lawyers, good citizens, and then help their communities in whatever way they can. We're not going to force any career options on them. The choice is going to be left up to them as to what they want to do at the end of a five-year legal education. Uh, but we hope that they will use the education in ways that will benefit the community, uh, either directly or indirectly. Um, so in terms of the kind of communities that we target, uh, of course, there is our, our biggest community is going to be the urban poor. Uh, because logistically, it's much easier for us to address this particular segment uh, in the short run, you know, because we're starting out. When we started out, effectively, we began with a pilot project in the uh, northeastern state of Sikkim. Uh, we identified uh, a small hilly town 
called Pelling uh, in the west of Sikkim. Uh, and we identified a government school there. Uh, we thought the students were pretty bright there, uh, but hadn't heard of the law. And uh, we began with a pilot there. We identified students uh, through a test uh, on, you know, that set out problems on logical reasoning, uh, on English comprehension, on legal reasoning, very, very basic uh, questions. And depending on who scored well in those papers, and depending on uh, uh, whose financial backgrounds uh, were not, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they were uh, children of uh, poor parents, uh, depending on that, we, we selected the children. Uh, and then put them through a very intensive training program. In fact, um, in fact, as we speak, um, uh, they are training right now at the National University of Juridical Sciences. And uh, so the program really began with the Pelling pilot and then it expanded out into parts of West Bengal, then it went out to Karnataka, Kerala, Rajasthan, Gujarat, uh, and several other states. Uh, but amongst all these states, uh, our, our largest portion of the students uh, would definitely be poor students from within the cities or around the cities. Uh, logistically, it's much easier for us to address the training challenges associated with the urban poor um, because uh, we can then tie up with training centers within the cities and uh, have the training centers train them directly um, not only that, we also get a good pool of students who are reasonably okay in English because they're studying in English medium schools around the cities. Um, and uh, one of our first targets was uh, the school called Loreto in uh, Calcutta, which has a very unique scheme whereby they take in both uh, you know, the fee-paying students, the rich students, and they also subsidize the education of the poor students. So they also take uh, students from very poor backgrounds whose educations are subsidized by the fees that the rich students pay. Uh, so we went there, we sensitized the students uh, and uh, also identified uh, students with an aptitude from both the rich sections and the poor sections. The rich sections were just referred to the training centers and they would then train at the training centers such as uh, LST and uh, IMS. Uh, these are the most popular uh, training centers for uh, CLAT. Uh, so the rich students were directly referred then, the, and, and these students would then just, just get training um, after paying a fee. And the poor students would be trained free of cost. And we'd also, uh, you know, uh, we'd also implement mentorship programs for them and other programs so that we handhold them a bit as they go along uh, so that they have a good chance at CLAT. Uh, 